welcome to uh, the introduction to my new project on my 914. Um, I've done several different projects uh, on the channel here with this car, uh, but this is the big project that I've been kind of planning on for a while in one version or another. And what I'm going to be doing is swapping uh, in a Subaru EZ30R engine. This is a flat six engine made by Subaru, similar to their famous flat fours that are are in so many of their cars, uh, but they built a flat six motor, actually a couple different versions of them. They actually can fit quite nicely in a 914 and are much less expensive than a 911 air-cooled engine. Um, so there's a lot of different parts to uh, the project, um, including setting the car up to be water-cooled instead of air-cooled. And then, you know, I had to order a lot of uh, custom-made parts, including an engine cradle, that is going to bolt the engine into the uh, factory 914 mounting points. And then I'm also going to be converting to a Subaru uh, five-speed transmission. And um, there'll be several parts of, of that conversion that I'll need to cover as well as I go along. So this is um, almost their last generation of flat six motor. They had an EZ36, which is a 3.6 liter, which was probably kind of their final version. Uh, but the EZ30R is um, quite an amazing bit of technology. Uh, it, it uses quad cams. It's a three liter high compression. It really has all of the modern um, performance technology that you would expect in a, in a, in a good performance motor. Uh, this, the EZ30R also uses a drive-by-wire throttle. Uh, which can be nice, but it's also definitely a consideration for those uh, who are planning to do this swap with this engine. It also uses a timing chain, so it's um, not really something you have to worry about reliability-wise. And basically these motors were made for their large um, uh, kind of family vehicles, uh, meant to be torquey. They rev out pretty well, uh, but they do not have a super high um, red line, maybe 65 to 6800 RPM. Uh, I would imagine maybe when I'm done with the swap because of uh, the custom ECU that I'll have to use and the custom exhaust that maybe the red line would move up a little higher than that. Um, but one of the most amazing things about this these motors is that you can order them pretty much all day long from uh, JDM suppliers on eBay or online. And um, which is what I did. I got this from a JDM supplier in California and it cost me $1,400 shipped. This engine in totally stock form, like in a, a Subaru Tribeca, puts out 240 horsepower. So even just taken at that, um, you know, it's a substantial, uh, very substantial horsepower increase and about equal amount of torque. So that's also very nice the exhaust systems on the, the factory uh, larger sedans and wagons um, are very restrictive so by the time this has uh, custom headers and then a very short exhaust coming out the back of the 914 um, it's uh, supposed to get a nice bump in horsepower and then I will have to run uh, custom ECU it looks like I'm going to be going with um, kind of the top of the heap um, Haltech um, Elite and I'll get into some details about why, I, why I'm leaning toward um, spending the money for that ECU. Uh, but I think with that, especially once it's well-tuned, um, there seems to be a, kind of a real possibility of getting 280, maybe even 300 horsepower out of this engine, which would be absolutely fantastic. Um, the other thing about them, just in terms of their technology, is they use um, variable valve timing. Um, run off these, uh, can't see them very well, but these little electric solenoids that change the cam timing at certain RPMs. Uh, but the other bit of tech that they have, which really helps the high RPM uh, performance, is they have variable valve lift. And so I'm hoping that the Haltech will be able to handle both of those performance features. The variable valve timing is kind of more for lower RPM benefit, and then the variable valve lift for higher RPM um, performance. I'm gonna be using a, um, a, a Subaru five-speed transmission. And this is one that I found locally. This is from a, um, 
uh, late 90s Impreza. And, you know, I found it for 140 bucks with the engine mounts and a flywheel. And um, it's kind of an unknown condition, but, it, you know, it, it physically shifts well. And so far, looking inside a little bit, seems to be all right. But at the price, I felt like it was, it was worth the gamble. Uh, when you go to do one of these transmission um, swaps as well, because you can run one of these with a uh, factory Porsche 901 transmission, but you have to pay for an adapter plate from like Kennedy Engineering, someplace like that. Um, uh, when you use the Subaru transmission, you have to get rid of the rear wheel drive part of the transmission. So really all you're doing is running off the front drive uh, portion of the transmission. And um, so <clears throat> when I got this transmission, it had a, a large cone, you know, like the tail end uh, that went to the drive shaft for the rear wheel drive uh, part of the transmission. Once I removed that, there were some gear components, the differential, rear differential, I was able to take out. And there's a double splined shaft um, inside of here. And I'm going to go into more detail on that, but I just wanted to sum up what's involved for doing this. Um, this little gear lockout right here is from a company called Subaru Gears in Australia. And um, so it has two different diameters of holes and, and each one is splined. So basically once you get a lock nut off of those, um, off the shaft in the transmission, this slides onto both splined shafts and locks them into a single unit and then you put the lock nut back on and now you've locked out the rear differential part and you are only running on the front drive part which is what we need for the 914 swap and uh, and then the other piece that you would need for this is a blank off plate um, that will go over the end of the transmission and this is also nice because it shortens the transmission i mean the other part with the gear the nose uh, on the transmission was probably sitting six or eight inches longer and so you get rid of that and then this just goes on over it and bolts in place and there you go the transmission is somewhat ready to go so the other component that is necessary for this and and this would be the case regardless of what kind of subaru engine you were using or even if you were doing a v8 swap in a 914 um, is some kind of a cradle to get the engine mounted to the chassis of the 914. This is um, one that I ended up getting from JWK Engineering, and, um, and I got this maybe about um, a week ago now. And to me, it looks like it's gonna work great. Um, you know, nice quality welds, all of the, uh, the parts that, um, you know, like these gussets and the bracket here are all uh, water jet cut and um, seem like they all fit well. I haven't tried to fit this onto the engine and onto the car yet, but um, I'm assuming all the dimensions are gonna work out. In this particular case, uh, these, these spots here are gonna, are gonna bolt to the factory Subaru engine mounts. And then um, this piece back here that's bolted on is gonna connect to the factory Subaru transmission mount. So this is basically holding the entire assembly and then at that point, you just have four remaining mounting points. This goes into the factory transmission mount point on the 914. And these two down here go to where the factory engine bar uh, mounts to the chassis. So this is a really great setup because uh, you're using the factory mount points on the engine and the transmission to mount to the cradle. And then you're using the factory mount points on the chassis of the 914 to attach to the mount points on the cradle. Um, so you really don't have to do any, some, any changes really at all to either transmission, engine, or the chassis. All told, um, including Greyhound shipping for this, um, is just a little over $800. And um, uh, for how easy I think this is gonna be to, to just sort of physically um, get the swap into the car, I think it's well worth it.